Today we're looking at carbon and we're going to look at what's called oxidation. Uh, so oxidation reduction involves carbon changing by what's around it. So when I have carbon surrounded by something that's highly electronegative like oxygen, and the oxygen can pull electron density away because the oxygen has lots of protons, very little shielding, high effective nuclear charge, what's going to happen is the carbon is going to form a partial positive charge. So it has very little electron density around it. We call that being in an oxidized state. Versus when we have carbon surrounded by hydrogens, which are less electronegative, the carbon is actually able to pull a little bit of extra electron density away from them, forming a negative partial charge. So that's called being a reduced state. So the amount of electron density around the carbon determines whether it's oxidized or reduced. So we're going to look at varying levels of being oxidized or reduced here. And we're going to use two different chemicals to kind of work with this. We're going to use potassium permanganate and potassium dichromate as our two that we're going to kind of use to go through and change these things from one to the other. So here we have three different alcohols. We have propanol, propanol, and 2-methylpropanol. So when we take a look at these and we start to add these reagents, we're going to use an acid catalyst. And when we do this, what's going to happen is the number of carbon to carbon bonds is going to remain unchanged. So the agents we're using to do the oxidation here are not capable of breaking or, or changing these. But the carbon to hydrogen bonds are able to be manipulated with. And so however many things we start with attached to the particular carbon we're looking at will influence what happens. So in this first example here, we're going to add potassium permanganate, an acid catalyst, something that won't interfere with the reaction. And we're looking at this carbon here, which has the hydroxyl group attached. So we have this carbon here, the first carbon of the propanol. And it currently has one bond to an oxygen and one bond to a carbon. So this type of, of alcohol is called a primary alcohol. And what we mean by that is that there's one carbon attached to the carbon with the alcohol. Now, as I start to move from an alcohol to more oxygen bonding, then we're going to go into a more oxidized state. So the first thing that's going to happen here is this is going to turn into an aldehyde. And so now we've gone from having one carbon and one oxygen attached, which means there are two hydrogens, to going to having one carbon and then two bonds to an oxygen, which means there's only one hydrogen remaining. So there's less hydrogen attached to this and more oxygen attached. So this has gone from a state, from a lower to a higher state of oxidation. If we continue on with this reaction, so we're going to end up forming carboxylic acid. Now in this case, we now have one bond to a carbon, two bonds to this oxygen, one bond to this oxygen, so we have three bonds to an oxygen. So this is a higher state of oxidation than what we had previously. Okay. Now, when do you stop here and when do you continue on here it depends on how you actually carry out this reaction. So we'll look at that in a second. Let's first look at a secondary alcohol. So secondary means that we're now looking at a case where the carbon with the hydroxyl group has two different carbons bonded to it. So this carbon has one bond to an oxygen, two to carbons, and one hydrogen there. So if we now add our reagents, let's add the dichromate this time, and some kind of acid catalyst, what's going to happen is this is going to increase the amount of oxygen bonded to it. So we start with the double bond there and we formed a ketone. Right. Now at this point we have two bonds to oxygens, two bonds to carbons, that's our four bonds. So there's no more hydrogens. So if I continue to let this react, nothing else is going to change. I can't take it all the way to this fully oxidized state with this reagent. Okay. Now if I go to the third example here, and I get either one of these, potassium permanganate or the dichromate, and whatever acid catalyst I want, that will not do some other form of reaction. This already has three bonds to carbons, one bond to an oxygen, so this carbon can't be oxidized any further without using something more reactive than this. And so this will lead to no reaction. So if we summarize that, if you have a primary carbon, then you're going to turn, or I'm sorry, primary alcohol, you're going to turn that into an aldehyde, which can then further turn into a carboxylic acid. If we have a secondary alcohol, that's going to turn into a ketone. And if we have a tertiary alcohol, there's going to be no reaction. 
So what we start with is influenced by, by whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. Let's add that in here. So primary, secondary, tertiary determines what we're going to get. Now, in this particular reaction, it depends on what you do in the actual mechanism itself. So let's assume that we are doing distillation. So in distillation, you're going to have your reaction mixture in a container, and then there's going to be a set of tubing that comes out of that container and can drip down another line into another container. So here's, here's our thing, and we have another beaker over here. So we have our mixture of the primary alcohol and all of these reagents in here, the reacting. As the aldehyde gets produced, we're heating this, and what's going to happen is the aldehyde is going to be at a lower boiling point than the alcohol, because this does not have hydrogen bonding capabilities, and they have essentially the same molar mass. So the dispersion forces are the same, and we have no hydrogen bonding. So the aldehyde, as it gets produced, is going to collect over here, and we're going to have this collect in the container here, and it's going to separate out. If we undergo what's called reflux, I know my room here. So in reflux, this is walled off here. You just have a tube coming right up, and they have a kind of a cooling tower, so to speak, where there's cool water running up along this. So as this reaction mixture produces the aldehyde, the aldehyde will vaporize. It'll go up into the tower, but it'll cool back down, liquefy, and come back to the container. So it's going to continue to heat, heat, heat this mixture, but it's going to keep returning back to the original container, and so it's going to continue to react, and it's going to end up forming the carboxylic acid. So if I heat under distillation conditions, I'm going to end up forming the aldehyde, while if I heat under reflux conditions, I'm going to continue through and form the carboxylic acid.